All right, so I'm out here uh, checking out my stock of rabbits to see how they're they're doing here, and they're eating me out of house and home when they get this size. I got to get some more hay in here for them. And even though this is uh, going to be processing day, I still give them plenty of food because they're used to it, and I want them to uh, be all calm. It really doesn't make that much difference when I'm processing. Let's get a weight on one of these bad boys, girls, whatever it is. I want you. Ah, there we go. Let's just see this thing. It's a good-sized rabbit. Ooh, you tried to scratch me. I saw that. Get him up here. All right. So it's the inside scale there, and we're sitting about uh, five and a half pounds, which is a perfect size for a rabbit to process. Uh, now it turns out it's the opposite with rabbits. The uh, males are a little bit behind, the females mature first. and uh, But it's not as big a difference as like with uh, chickens. The males, uh, roosters in the uh, um, Cornish rocks, they, uh, they're they a pound heavier at eight weeks. The females, I usually have to keep to nine to get them up the similar weight. So anyways, I've got these uh, 20 rabbits. I'm going to process them just to save my wallet because boy, oh boy, do they eat. I'm going through a 50-pound bag of... Uh, of this uh, rabbit feed and I'm going through a bale about uh, every day and a half two days and it's mainly because of these guys really sweet rabbits I'm going to show you the other ones yeah they're sweet tasting too they're going to be sweet tasting in my freezer now if you're doing your rabbit stock correctly you'll have a constant rotation coming in so I even got their nesting box out of here. These guys are, uh, they're right at about a month old. So they have two months till they grow up to the size of that other one. Three months total. Except you got a month uh, gestation period too. So it's four months from beginning to end. These guys are pretty big. They're about a week, week or two out over here. I just got a lot of rabbits. Let me show you something. We had some babies yesterday. We had to move the mamas away from the babies because they just get tormented by the young bucks. And so they're uh, they're out here having a rest and relaxation. I'm not going to uh, mate these guys. Well, maybe that brown one, I might go one more time with her through the summer. But I pretty much shut it down. It's just too hard on them. My white ones, I, I'm going to let them rest because they're... Uh, they're the premier rabbits right there. They put out some monster, monster rabbits. So yesterday we had some babies in here. Look at that. Again, I don't mess with them too much at this young. I'm going to wait uh, three or four days and I'll pull them out and see how many we've got. But that looks like a basket full right in there. I think there's about eight of them. That's wonderful to see this. Put them back. This is a really good mama here. Some of these are really protective when they have their babies. They don't really bite or anything, but they pounce on you and it kind of scares you a little bit. But uh, I usually just give them a little boop on the nose and say, knock it off. This is my other mother that I separated her out because uh, again, she needs a little break, but she's my brown eyed white bunny. I think we got all black bunnies in here. Now don't jump on me. You're the these brown ones are these are wilder bunnies, so you gotta, gotta watch them. But uh, we got some uh, brownish and some blackish and all different colors. I call it this is like a squirrel color. This brown color. She's like, what are you doing? I'm just looking at your babies. Why is it when I'm inside there, you think you got to talk to me? You got everything you need. I went ahead and gave you your food this morning. Is there something I'm missing? Your water looks a little dirty, but not bad. Wow, you guys ate a lot of that food I put in here already. Are you backed up for the uh, laying your eggs? You're telling me to get you some more? I mean, you got... 
you got four spots to lay eggs, that's plenty for you guys. Plenty. Okay? So let's look at my little chickies here. They're growing up like crazy. You guys still have several months before we're going to... Now, I want you to see this fancy foot here. This is a rooster. So even though I bought uh, three, I ended up with one rooster out of the three. See the furry feathers? He didn't like it that I got them blocked in. That one has furry feathers too, but it has no comb on the top. And I got another Rhode Island red hen. I really want a rooster Rhode Island red. Instead, I got one of these fancy feet Rhode Island reds. Or ro <laughs> fancy feet rooster. You know, he's in the corner. He's like, how did you guys get out? He doesn't understand. I got to get that little nursery thing out of the way. Yeah, I think I can chase him out. Yeah, go. Go the other way. Go the other way. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Now, can you figure it out yet? There you go. Not the brightest. This uh, fall, I'm going to get probably like uh, five or six uh, roosters. And uh, I only need one, but uh, a lot of times I'm getting the mixed sex because that's what they have at the uh, uh, tractor supply. But, you know, maybe I'll order a bunch of the Cornish rocks and pick up some roosters at the same time. That way I can raise them up together. They'll probably do okay. So out of my uh, 50 rabbits, you know, I processed six a couple weeks ago. And now I've got uh, 20 I'm going to do today. There's a was a total of 49 or 50 that I had to do. But I've already got 24 coming up from behind. So this is like an assembly line. They just keep coming. I keep them separated and I made them at my rate that I want to uh, that I want to raise them. A lot of people, you know, they do this co-mingling. Well, that's just a huge mistake because one, you're not controlling the uh, quality of the. They're not called a herd. I forget what they're called. But there's a bunch of them. You want your uh, rabbitry to have the best quality rabbits as possible. And so, you know, I've been mating for. You know, when you think about eggs, you have like medium, large, and jumbo. When I first started out, I wasn't choosy. I'd, you know, taken over somebody else's rabbitry, and it took me a while to move mine up from the medium to the large, and I'm starting to get some of the jumbo sizes now. It's fantastic when you see that because it's just efficiency. You want to be able to raise the most amount of meat in the shortest amount of time. And so that has to do with the quality of your stock. Now, I've been picking on uh, silver a little bit, and it's just because I'm using data. Silver is, uh, unfortunately, does not perform as well as gold. And people buy it because it's cheap, but if you go look at the pricing of it, it's not cheap. It's less expensive dollar-wise, but you're paying a premium in many cases to buy this. And then when you sell, you get less money back than if you'd have just bought the uh, Silver Eagles to begin with. Even though you're paying more of a premium for selling, you get uh, more of a premium when you buy, or when, I'm sorry, you get more of a premium when you, you pay more of a premium when you buy, and you get more of a premium when you sell, you come out ahead. But it's still a 18 to 20% premium that you're paying right at the beginning versus gold is only like 4%. And since gold has a much higher return over different lifetimes, short lifetime, it's like two times return, long lifetime, it could be like 30 to 60 times more return. So you just have to use math and logic and not emotion. You can't uh, believe that you're gonna be able to figure out how to sell it to peak and convert. And you're still not going to come out ahead of gold on the long haul. You, you're better just buy and hold and, and be good to go. Now, like I said, a lot of times I'm buying precious metals because I'm going to go where the money is being treated best. So to like the last 10 years, 
actually, I would say the last six years or so, 2012, I started, uh, you know, buying real estate. You know, I was able to double my money with real estate. You couldn't say that with gold, couldn't say that with silver. In some cases, triple my money when you count the rents and everything. So, you know, I didn't, I've got gold and silver, but I will, one strategy is, let's say gold and silver doubles. You take half of your money out of gold and silver and you rotate it either into cash and wait for the other opportunity or you go ahead and move it into like real estate if it's depressed. And you let the other half ride because that's the house's money. That's the way you do a mature way of investing. And uh, we'll talk about that more, but there's lots of strategies for investing. Anyways, I got to get out here and I got to, I'm going to eat a little breakfast and I'm going to come out and work in the garden. We got a lot of work to do today. Like I said, I'm going to try to get 10 rabbits done today and 10 tomorrow. And, and that's the other thing. I mean, if you're putting all your eggs in or your uh, money into precious metals, you better figure out how to get yourself some food. And so, you know, big gardens, uh, protein, and then you're going to be much better off than if you just had metals because some of this stuff is just going to go offline. You're not going to have it available. And uh, this way you can still feed yourself. And it doesn't matter how much gold and silver you have, you may not be able to buy food. Hey, I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can. God bless.